following video is not really for kids. Your discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers. This is the only film review, but we're hopefully a successful review. And today we're going to be taking a look, look at the Transformers Walmart exclusive Legacy Velocitron Speed 500 Collection Deluxe Class Decepticon Crasher. Now, unfortunately, Crasher, it might be the last uh, Speed 500 figure that I add to my Transformers collection during the current year of 2022. Uh, as of this video's recording, it's still where I live. It's still Sunday, December 18th, so there's two weeks left before the year end. I'm super behind on my reviews. I apologize. Nice to those of you who have subscribed to my channel for taking so long getting my reviews done. Uh, earlier last week, we had a faulty uh, electronic transformer on one of the telephone poles out what was in our neighborhood, and the lights kept fading in and out. We kept losing the internet, and I was unable to get my reviews, any reviews done last week, except for uh, my two most recent ones. And so I apologize for that. And the reason why I say, unfortunately, Crasher might be the last Speed 500 figure I had, had is because I was hoping before the current year of 2022 came to an end that I would get the... Uh, Velocitron Speed of 500, uh, uh, Wave 2 leader class figure of Autobot Galaxy Shuttle, but Galaxy Shuttle has not appeared at any Walmart store or is in my area of California, and uh, there's no Walmarts where I live anyways, and um, Galaxy Shuttle has still not appeared available for sale on Amazon, and uh, the cheapest I've seen Galaxy Shuttle going for on eBay is a scalper wanting uh, $200 for him, and they said that he wouldn't ship out until uh, late January, early February, regardless. So it appears that I will not be able to get Galaxy Shuttle this year, but I'm hoping uh, after the new year, next year in 2023, I'll be able to do it. But bringing focus back here to Crasher. Crasher is so much special due to the fact that uh, she is not only a female, female character, but Crasher is actually a character from a franchise originally that was not a part of the Transformers called the GoBots. The GoBots was a rival series to the, the original Transformers franchise back in 1984, for those of you who are unaware. that It was a franchise created by Tonka Toys before Tonka was bought out by Hasbro. And a cartoon based on the GoBots, GoBots action figures was released by Hanna-Barbera era. And Crasher, because she was created in 1984 before all the female Transformers characters were created, such as Alita 1 and RC, who were introduced in 1985 and 1986. Technically, Crasher holds the title, to put it bluntly, of being the first ever female ale transforming robot to appear here. So that's a bit of interesting trivia there regarding, regarding uh, why Crasher is a special uh, character. Um, so for those of you, yeah, those of you wondering, um, wondering why is it that um, Crasher it's taken such a long time for Hasbro to release a modern day action figure of Crasher. Well, to put it, to try and cover the highlights as quickly and briefly as possible, even though here in the United States, because Hasbro bought out Tonka and they've owned the rights to the GoBots franchise since Tonka was purchased, purchased from them, I believe Tonka was bought by Hasbro. It was either in 1989 or 1990, somewhere around the that time in history. The GoBots franchise in Japan is still owned by Bandai, a rival, com rival company to Takara Tomy. And that's one of the reasons why, even though Hasbro has owned the rights to the GoBots franchise since the early 1990s, 90s, uh, the GoBots haven't been turned into Transformers characters because in Japan, if Takara Tomy were to blatantly release the GoBots characters under, under the Transformers franchise, they would come into a copyright infringement with Bandai and Bandai is unwilling to hand over the rights to the GoBots franchise to Takara Tomy just for the sake of releasing modern-day action figures of them, and because asking Bandai to hand over to Takara Tomy the GoBots franchise just for the purpose of me making action figures, it would be the same as asking Hasbro, uh, asking, uh, uh, sorry, not Hasbro, Mattel to sell Hasbro the rights to the Hot Wheels franchise just for the sake of having Transformers transform into Hot Wheels car cars and it's just not. It's just something that's not going to happen. So the GoBots characters and the GoBots franchise as a whole has been stuck in a kind of limbo. Oh, since Hasbro bought out, bought out the GoBots fran franchise 
that bought the rights to them when they purchased Tonka. Tonka, so here in the United States, it's no problem for the GoBots characters to be, uh, characters to be a full-time trans, become full-time Transformers characters. In Japan, however, it's just not going to happen. It's a completely different story. Sorry, but a lot of Transformers fans and collectors are hoping that uh, Crasher might open the floodgates and allow more GoBots characters to become official Transformers characters. There are enough uh, um, action figures of the Transformers action figures that have been released that, just like Crasher here, here those figures could be repainted and retooled into characters from the GoBots franchise. Crasher here is a repaint of the Transformers uh, Kingdom Earth Mode Mirage figure, which was released last year in 2021. And this actually is not the first action figure of Crasher that's been a repaint of Mirage uh, way back in 2008. During the uh, Transformers uh, 2007 Movie 1 line of Transformers action figures, um, figures the uh, 2006 uh, Transformers Classics Deluxe Class Mirage figure was repainted into Crasher, but to avoid conflict with Bandai, uh, the Crasher repaint of Classics Mirage uh, it, uh, was released under the name of Fracture, and a lot of Transformers fans and GoWatts fans alike believed that Fracture was going to be the official Transformers name for Crasher. And that's why it's been a pleasant delight for Transformers and GoBots fans alike. Like that, this new uh, Transformers Legacy figure has Crasher's original GoBots name. Name and also uh, interesting bit of trivia: the 2008 uh, Fracture or Crasher Deluxe figure that was released back then. That figure was also a Walmart exclusive here in the United States. So even though even though, to put it bluntly, Crasher has been given two modern-day deluxe class Transformers figures over figures over the last uh, 14 years. Both of them have been released as Walmart exclusives, so whether or not an action figure of Crasher is going to ever be released at mass retail is uncertain. Uh, one thing to note about the uh, Wave 2 uh, Speedia 500 figures is that for the deluxe figures, um, the Wave 1 figures, they were packaged in the box at an angle so you could see most of the upper half and bottom half and side view of the vehicle mode, but here on the Wave 2 figures, the um, um, diagonal uh, cardboard insert, it's been replaced with a regular uh, a flat insert here, and so to see the entire top of the vehicle mode, they're just taped to the back, back side of the box rather than being packaged at an angle. I kind of didn't, didn't mind seeing the diagonal uh, display boxes, boxes on these figures, although it does mean that there's a Far less likely chance of being covered in dust due to the stupid open window packaging here. So, with all that background information on Nation on Crasher out of the way, hey, we're already eight minutes into the review, so let's bring focus here on Legacy Crasher herself. So here she is inside her box. She's packaged in her vehicle mode, and being a straight up and being a repaint of Transformers Kingdom Mirage with a different head sculpt. Uh, she has her. A Classics GoBots uh, race car mode, although she's based more, more off of a uh, Formula One race car, and I believe Crasher's original uh, race car mode, it was a, it was not a Formula One, it was a different type of race car, but I guess the design here is at Hasbro, and the car Tomy didn't really have much to, much say so, oh, due to ban, because of Bandai, but makes perfect sense, makes sense for Fracture, for Crasher to be a repaint of, of uh, Mirage. So here's some artwork of her in her robot mode. I kind of wish on the artwork they would have given her... They would have made her uh, lips black. Uh, like, uh, that's one thing Hanna-Barbera did for in the GoBots cartoon was... Uh, Crasher's lips were painted black, and so it looked like she was wearing lipstick when transformed into her robot mode. And that was done to just further distinguish her... Distinguish the fact that she was supposed to be a female character... Character, but... It's just a minor nitpick I have have with the box art, but yeah, that's still a nice nice uh, action pose there of Crasher. She looks like she's charging into battle, battle, and considering how she was portrayed in the Gobot ser series of being a total bad girl, I wouldn't be surprised if Crasher would do whatever it takes to win in any race, race that she enters. Here's some image of her vehicle mode again. Got another image of the vehicle mode here on the top. The authentic Transformers logo, Takara Tomy's logo, there on the top of the box. We've got Hasbro's logo, the Transformers logo, which is just the word Transformers in red letters. The Transformers Legacy logo, logo the Velocitron Speed of 500 
collection logo, which is just the words of Birds of the Lion and itself. On this side of the box, you just got the uh, uh, the image for the Velocitron Speed Planet, and on this side of the box, you got a close up close up look of the same image of Crasher here on this side of the box. Uh, so there's a nice close up of her. Her and uh, some Transformers fans and collectors have pointed out that uh, Crasher, rather than having an entirely brand new head sculpt, uh, she actually has a as a head sculpt that I believe is based off of the um, Transformers uh, Siege, uh, one of the versions of Mirage that was released in the Transformers Siege line. It was the uh, holographic Mirage figure that was released as an Amazon exclusive three pack, which is cast entirely in clear blue plastic. It was done to uh, uh, show Mirage when he's invisible, and I believe that's what the head sculpt here used for Crasher here is. It's not an original head sculpt Hasbro into cartoon. We just took that alternate head sculpt. Um, holographic siege mirage and put it here on the kingdom earth mode version of version of mirage and just did it in crasher's iconic uh, black white and red paint job here on the back of the box you've got crasher in her robot mode in her vehicle mode or formula one race car she transforms back and forth between both modes in 18 steps and yes uh, it's uh, uh pretty amazing that she's uh it's actually uh, pretty amazing when you consider the uh, legal, the uh, trademark legal rights between Bandai owning the GoBots franchise in Japan that has Wonder Cartomi were able to release Crasher, Asher under her not only under her original name but blatantly release her and use her as a uh, a fully fledged Transformers character with uh, here on the uh, disclaimer on the back of the box it basically states that has Wonder Cartomi owned the rights to the Transformers franchise. Uh, franchise but because ha and it doesn't really mention Bandai here on the back Max so yeah this is a really uh really cutting it really close with Bandai but hopefully Bandai won't uh won't uh, lash out at Hasbro and Dakartomi for releasing Crasher Asher in the Velocitron in the legacy Velocitron line line and here's hoping that Crasher does in fact open up the floodgates and we get more GoBots as Transformers characters since Hasbro owns the rights to them and them here in the United States. So without further delay, let's get Crasher out of her box and take a close look at her in her vehicle mode. Alright, here's Crasher out of her box. Ox trans Ox, she's in her alt mode. So since that's what she's packaged in, this is the mode we will be starting in. And I am just thrilled to finally have an action figure of Crasher in my Transformers collection. Action. I started to watch the GoBots cartoon series, but I can never really get into it, so into it. And the first couple of episodes are kind of slow paced, so I probably missed out out on some uh, real more adventurous episodes that came out later on in the show. I think there was a I they believe there is a total of either uh, sixty or seventy episodes of the GoBots cartoon. I don't know with absolute certainty, so I apologize for not having looked into that before starting Crash's review, but Regardless, um, this figure is very true to the paint job that her original GoBots action figure had. had and um, um, in the original GoBots line of action figures, Tonka actually released two versions of Crasher. The mostly black version is the one that Hanna-Barbera used in the GoBots cartoon show. But there was also a version of Crasher that was uh, almost entirely white with, I believe it was, uh, red and blue stripes. Maybe if I'm remembering correctly. Exactly, but yes, I really enjoy the black used here on Crasher. But on that note, half of the black that's used on Crasher is black paint. Like these side panels here where these uh, intake vents are located. That made it that part that looks my camera's making look really shiny and glossy. That's black paint. I believe the plastic, yeah, it's actually uh, white plastic. It's the same thing with the black used here on this uh, uh, intake vent behind the... Uh, seat where a driver would sit in the car or this becomes uh, crasher's lower arms that's black paint as well as same with the black here on the uh, racing spoiler it's white plastic that has black paint on it on it so it's disappointing to see that at least half of crasher's uh, uh parts that look like they're black they're actually a uh, white plastic that's has black paint on them same thing with the black on her uh, uh robot mode chest Yes, and also on her uh, shoulder joints right there, it's uh, white plastic with black paint over it, but the other parts of her are done in 
black plastic. Um, this uh, front section on here with her uh, number uh, 01 on, on the front of her vehicle mode, that's uh, black plastic. Um, these parts here that become her uh, robot mode feet, yet yeah, they are black plastic as well, as are the uh, elbow joints and the uh, joints and the uh, shoulder joints. Joints, those are black plastic as well. Well, and some of the part parts of her that there's other parts of her that are. Uh, Done in a very dark uh, gunmetal gray, such as the uh, uh, front uh, racing fin here on the front of her. Her that's actually a dark gray plastic. There's some more dark gray bits, such as the supports for her front wheels. These parts, which become her robot mode uh, heel spurs, and also the uh, uh, this part right here, which becomes her robot mode uh, spinal cord. That's a dark gray plastic as well. As is the uh, neck joint, which forms the back center of her vehicle mode. Oh, that's dark gray. But yes, I do enjoy how the paint job came out. Came out, and unfortunately, one problem that this mold, mold is known to have is the uh, two halves of the entire front section of the uh, race car are these become the uh, robot mode legs, and so unfortunately, they have a habit of not wanting to come together and stay connected to each other very well, and unfortunately Crasher here is no exception to that. And I do love that they gave her a uh, silver Decepticon logo right here. Here, so that's really nice to see. I think that might actually be a reference to her 2008 uh, a, uh, movie one on a Fracture action figure. I believe it also had a silver Decepticon logo, so that could be a reference to the fa to her our first Transformers action figure of 2007 Movie 1 Fracture, having a silver uh, movie verse, verse Decepticon sticker, and it could also avoid trademark rights again with Bandai having it be silver instead of purple, but yeah, it's still a great Decepticon logo regardless. And for a size comparison, here is Fracture next to the figure she's repainted from, which is from Kingdom Earth Mode Mirage. Uh, one thing I did to distinguish Crasher from Mirage is I put her Laser guns on the opposite side of Mirage. So, uh, the only newly sculpted piece to distinguish Crasher from Mirage is her uh, robot mode head. head. Uh, Mirage is uh, somewhat distinguished when I turn, the, turn them around to the back. I bought a uh, upgrade kit for Mirage that allows his uh, rocket launcher to sit on his shoulder piece. On the top of his shoulder, so he does have an upgrade kit that distinguishes him from Crasher. And also the... Uh, other use of the mold, so here also is Legacy, uh, the uh, Wreck and Rule collection. Actually, uh, this is Generation 2 Leadfoot. The, uh, it is nice that the two figures that are repainted from Kingdom Mirage have distinguished enough paint jobs that you can tell right away that they are supposed to be uh, separate Transformers characters from Mirage, so that is pretty nice to see all three of them, three of them lined up here. Here, um, as far as which of these guys is my favorites, um, I do have a lot of nostalgia for Mirage, so uh, and I did, uh, and I do enjoy Mirage enough that I got the upgrade kit for him. But as far as which is my second favorite version of the mold after Mirage, it's kind of hard because since um, Crasher and also Leadfoot were released as exclusives, uh, actually now that I think about it, Mirage was an exclusive as well. So yeah, every version of this uh, Earth Mode Deluxe Class Mirage figure has been released as an exclusive. So that's uh, pretty discouraging to know that all of these have been exclusives and none of them have been released at mass retail. But regardless, um, regardless uh, Crasher, she definitely has that 1980s uh, paint job look that Mirage has. And of course, Leadfoot, being a Generation 2 character, he's got the very bright, vibrant, vibrant uh, paint job from the Generation 2 series during the early 90s. But yeah, I really enjoy how all three of these figures look beside each other. Other and that's pretty much all there is to say about vehicle mode. Uh, the wheels, they kind of spin somewhat freely, but just like a real-life Formula 1 race car, there's only a hairline of clearance space, so the only surface you're going to be able to roll this vehicle around on is a very flat surface. Surface, so without further delay, let's get Crasher transformed into her robot mode, and we'll wrap up the review. Alright, here's Crasher. 
as you're transformed into her robot mode. And again, the and the uh, one part of her that's newly sculpted is her head. Uh, and I seen on more than one review where some where some collectors thought that her head was a straighter brief paint from the uh, head used on the Siege Holographic Mirage. Um, I don't own that figure, so I can't uh, make that statement with 100% certainty, so I'm not certain if this head sculpt is new or not. But it is very accurate to the head sculpt that Crasher had in the GoBots cartoon show. I really love how it came out. Uh, some have said that it looks like the, uh, the Sphinx, Sphinx, and it looks like a ancient Egyptian headpiece on her with the two uh, side vents on her, her and the way it's angled down. Now and then, now that I've, uh, and after I heard someone say that, me that uh, someone commented on it, I could never unsee it from there, but I really think it does uh, work for Crasher. Asher. Again, it's just a minor nitpick, but I wish they would have uh, uh, painted her lips black, just like Hanna-Barbera did for the GoBots cartoon show, but Again, it's just a minor nitpick. Nitpick, so. If you have prior knowledge on the fact that Crasher is supposed to be a female Transformers character, then, uh, despite having just a head sculpt to distinguish her from Mirage, apart, along with her paint job, uh, paint job, uh, once you look, once you know that Crasher is a female character, then, character, it's, uh, character, it's, uh, pretty easy to see how uh, distinguished she is. <clears throat> I lost my train of thought there for a moment, so moving on. Um, unfortunately, the black on uh, Crasher's head, it's all paint. I can see it right now, and I can even hear it slightly. I think the base plastic on the inside, it's really hard for me to tell if it's uh, white or if it's the same dark gray plastic used on her transformation joints. joints. I really can't tell, but yeah, it's all paint. I Ain't so I just this is one of those cases where why I wonder why they didn't just make it out of the color plastic that they want it to be. Why did they was it really that much cheaper doing it in a different colored plastic than painting the whole thing black entirely? I honestly can't say. Unfortunately, fresh out of the box, the even though Crusher's head sculpt is on a ball joint ball joint, the black paint, I don't know if it's because of that or if it's because of uh because of what it is, but the ball joint is kind of a a joint, it's a minor kind of useless due to the fact that Crasher's new head sculpt, it, well, it hits the, uh, the corners of her helmet hit these, uh, the ends of these white bits here on her chest, so unfortunately you have to, uh, angle her chin up, up, and it's only, like, one millimeter clearance to get her to look left and right, so her head articulation is unfortunately rendered useless, useless thanks to her newly sculpted head design, I mean, but she does have a lot of articulation with her other joints. The arms can spin uh, forward and backwards 360 degrees. Easy. You have a swivel joint. Might have the bicep. Bicep hinge joints in the elbows. The hands can move in and out of the wrists, but that's primarily a transformation joint. Swivel joints in the waist, so she can spin the upper half of her body left and right. Right 360 degrees. You have your universal joint. Planted hips, so the legs can go. You get the arms out of the way. The legs can go out this far, so Crasher can do... A full splits of the legs can go forward or that far they can go backwards um that far as well so you can get some good kicking action with crasher as well uh swivel joints in the upper half part of the thigh i uh i i believe the hinge joint point in the knee is supposed to be a swivel hinge but it feels like there's a it feels like a ratchet hinge because Right there, here instead of just swiveling back on the way, you can feel like a ratchet there. You're hitting it, and then the feet can go up and down. The toes can go up and down. And I'll do the transformation, and the feet have an ankle rocker, so you can get it uh, crash you into a wide legged pose if you want. So, overall, a pretty decent amount of articulation. And then, of course, um, one thing you can do with Crasher is you can have her uh, hold weapons in whichever way you want. I have her holding her weapons like this. It's just to further distinguish her from Mirage. Uh, the original GoBots uh, Crasher action figure, and this was true for most of the uh, original GoBots action figures, they were uh, small enough, and the uh, hands were even smaller that they couldn't hold uh, 
oh, that there weren't any laser guns designed for them to be held. And in fact, in the GoBots uh, cartoon series, rather than using handheld weapons the way the Transformers did, the GoBots characters just shot uh, laser blasts out of their hands. And, and they're shown doing it multiple times in the uh, uh, opening sequence, the opening so theme song for the GoBots cartoon show. So um, if someone were to design a blast effect weapon that can clip over the 5mm fist of a Transformers character and make it look like they're shooting a laser blast out of their arms that would make a that would be a screen accurate a weapon for Crasher to use. Ooh, so uh, this is a it's pretty nice for pretty nice to see Maria yeah, Crasher using an actual uh, laser gun rather than just shooting laser blasts out of her the ends of her arms arms because that's one of the main distinctions between Ine. Gobot's character and a Transformer's character is the use of a handheld weapon versus just shooting lasers out of your out of your fists. All right, and just to finish off the review for some size comparisons in robot mode, here is Crash Asher next to Kingdom Mirage. Uh, and again, I did get a, a third-party upgrade kit from Mirage, so his uh, rocket launcher can now sit on the top of his shoulder. Older, so just to further distinguish uh, Crasher from Mirage and also from by the use of the mold for another size comparison here is uh, Legacy Leadfoot. So yeah, you can uh, get them in. You can display these guys with their weapons in different configurations if you want to further distinguish them from each other. But again, if you were to uh, unfortunately, if you were to uh, decapitate and remove the heads on all three of these guys and uh, you'd have three copies of the same action figure, just done in different colors, but I'm really thrilled with how accurate Crasher's uh, black, white, and red paint job it is, and how it matches up with her animation model from the GoBots cartoon. It's kind of hard for my camera to pick it up, but uh, one thing that Hanna-Barbera did for Crasher's uh, face is that in the GoBots cartoon series, she had this kind of like a, I wouldn't know if you would call it a magenta or fuchsia purplish pink a color on her actual face, and Hasbro and the cartoon were able to replicate that here on the new Legacy figure, so that's pretty nice to see uh, how uh, accurate to the GoBots cartoon uh, Crasher is. Uh, whether or not Crash, again, even though I'm repeating myself up at this point, uh, whether or not Crasher is going to open the floodgates for other GoBots characters to become Transformers characters is uncertain at this point, but I personally would buy up. Uh, action figures of the GoBots characters if they were turned into Transformers the way Crasher has been. And but oh, so overall, all to uh, finish up the review for the proverbial question: Do I recommend getting Transformers Legacy Velocitron Speed 500 Collection Deluxe Class Crasher and adding her to your Transformers collection? Absolutely, I do. You cannot go wrong having the Kingdom Earth Mo Mirage figure done in this mostly black paint job with Crasher. Um, Asher, Asher, and there's uh, a very few uh, female uh, Transformers characters compared to male ones, and that is female Decepticons have always been small in number, number so for Crasher to become an official full, an official Transformers character and make the um, uh, I guess this pun is intended for Crasher to be transformed from a GoBots character to a Transformers character. I I'm thrilled that Hasbro and Cartomi were able to get around the whatever legal legal battles they would have with Bandai and were able to give us an action figure of Crasher. Asher, I hope we get action figures of the other GoBots characters, especially the other main characters who appeared in the GoBots cartoon frequently along with Crasher, such as uh, Leader One, Psykill, Copdor, or uh, Scooter, and... Uh, Scooter and... Uh, Darn, I forgot his name. Aim for a second. Oh yeah, and Turbo. So yeah, I really hope that we get action figures of at least the main line GoBots characters. Characters. Oh, characters. So I hope you guys have a chance to pick up Crasher if you find her at your local Walmart store or if you're in a, the same position I am where you don't have a Walmart store where you live. Uh, if I've seen uh, Crasher going for pretty decent prices where I got her, which is off of eBay. 
eBay, and yes, uh, I am just uh, a lot of. I've always been a fan of Crasher ever since I found out who she was. Ever since her uh, deluxe uh, movie verse figure was released uh, exclusively at Walmart back in 2008. But yes, I am thrilled to find. I missed out on that figure, which is why I didn't bring it out for a size comparison. I don't have that in my Transformers collection, so this has become the first and only action figure of Crasher that I have in my Transformers collection. Same thing here with Generation 2 Leadfoot. I said that in his review. You, so it's nice to see Mirage being, uh, Mirage having uh, other figures being, that he can be repainted into, into, but yes, I'm really thrilled with how these guys came out, so thank you guys all so much, this review has gone longer than I wanted to, this has been the Kia Fan Geek, and this has been my look at Transformers Legacy, the Crasher, I highly recommend you get her, so until next time you guys, stay safe, stay healthy, Transformer and roll out, goodbye everyone.